sing a song at the piano to you, I would like to demonstrate a few of my latest domestic inventions. Well, now, first of all, I would like to present my patent door shutter. How many of you ladies and gentlemen here have been annoyed at some time or other by people coming into your offices or coming into your homes and going out again and leaving the door open? You've either got to get up from the chair and shut it yourself or leave it as it is. Well, now, I've done away with all that by the aid of my patent door shutter, which I have here. You just take this in the right hand and you throw it smartly through the window, then the draft comes in through the hole in the glass and blows the door to. And now I come to my patent umbrella. You'll observe, of course, that there is a hole in this. <coughs> well, now, <coughs> that hole is there for a purpose. You're walking along the street, it's pouring with rain, you're not quite sure whether it's left off raining or not. If you do that, you get an eyeful of water or an earful of water. But with this patent umbrella of mine, all you have to do is to revolve it round very slowly till you come to the hole and you can look through and see if it's left off raining or not. <coughs> now, when travelling on the bus, the tube or the underground during rush hours, you know how uncomfortable it is. People are barging into you right and left, you can't get a comfortable seat. People standing on your toes and so on. But now I've done away with that by the aid of my steel pointed belt which I have here. All one does going out in the morning is just to put that on thus, and of course you can travel in absolute comfort. Anybody gets a little too close to you, you can go to the right or the left and jab them and so on, and you can continue your journey without any further trouble, whatever. Now, uh, gentlemen, you go into a hosier's, and you buy yourself a pair of socks. So what you pay for them, half a crown, three and six, four and six, or five and six a pair. What happens? After you've had them a few days, they are full of holes. I say, why wait a few days to have holes in your socks when with these patent socks I have here, the holes are in already. And they have this advantage. In the morning, when you get up, you're not quite sure where you are, your eyes are not quite open, you can get your feet in either end, with the greatest of ease. And now I come to what I call my pièce de résistance. This is the resistance here. Now this is my patent lie detector. Now, we're all given to telling lies at some time or other, and it is very often essential we should find out if a person is really speaking the truth or not. And in order to do that, we just set this machinery in motion, and the person to be examined comes into the room and stands either here or here, as the case may be, and is questioned. <coughs> if he or she is telling a small lie, it lights up a little white light there. If they're telling a larger lie, then it lights up the green light. And if they're telling a very bad lie, then of course up comes the jolly old horbulation. Daddy! <coughs> Daddy! Oh, excuse me one moment, it's my daughter. Um, where have you been? Why didn't you come home last night? Didn't you get my wire? Wire? What wire? I didn't get any wire. Well, I sent you a wire. Oh? What was it all about? Well, I missed the last train. Missed the last train? Well, couldn't you have taken a taxi? There weren't any taxis. No taxis? Well, what did you do? I spent the night with Mother. 